go back to that moment like what what was the the turning point that that shifted you fully into like theater yeah well they were doing a play called snow white and the seven dwarves and i wanted to audition and sister timothy said that i couldn't audition and i said mm, so why and so she said well you know eileen um snow white should be of a certain elk and i thought okay but if I'm the best person for the role, maybe, you know, why wouldn't you consider that? So she let me audition, and I got the role. Mm. And that's been kind of when I was in my earlier years, and really even in my career as a woman, as a black woman doing the art and making art happen, that's been the journey kind of that I've had to um, push through. Welcome, welcome back to The Fade. I am your wonderful host, Brandon Morgan, and I am sitting here with the illustrious, the dear, the magnificent, uh, somewhat like another mother to me, Miss Eileen J. Morris. Hey, How are you doing I'm today? I'm great. I'm that, so wonderful. That is good. It's so good to have you it's here. It's good to be yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, you know, so much. You know, I was so excited when I found out we was going to do this. So <laughs> I was like, yep, sign me up. I'll be there. Let's <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. We we didn't have enough talks anyway. Oh, so, yes, absolutely. So, yeah. so let's just get into it. For the people who may not know you or what you are or who you are, irregardless of how great you are, you know, just uh, you can give your basic intro to the world and let them know who you are. Oh, sure, yeah. absolutely. Thank you, first of all, you are very uh, to the Fave for having mm -hmm. me uh, here today. I appreciate all those behind the scenes as well, making this happen. It takes a village to do this kind of thing. Uh, my name is Eileen J. Morris. I'm the uh, artistic director of the Ensemble Theater in Houston, Texas. I hail from Chicago, Illinois, and I went to school there. I was raised Catholic all my life. And so I went to Catholic schools and uh, practiced the Catholic faith. And uh, really, that's how I got my start in theater, because um, when I was in, I, I wanted to um, be a nun up until fifth grade. OK. okay. I know, right? And, uh, and then something happened in fifth grade where hormones start kicking in. I started wearing glasses. <laughs> I don't know. I saw the world in a whole nother light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so then I really found a passion and a love of an, and a way of being able to express myself yeah. in theater. Yeah. And so that's how I got, you know, started in theater. And then, you know, they wanted to do, uh, during that time, these institutions, these Catholic institutions were doing plays yeah. that spoke to people that didn't look like me. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that I could audition and be a part of that. And that was my kind of yeah. uh, tumultuous journey yeah. in, into getting into theater. Yeah. So, so let, let's go back to that moment. Like, what what was the the turning point that that shifted you fully into like theater? Yeah. Well, they were doing a play called Snow White and the right. Seven Dwarfs, and I wanted to audition. And Sister Timothy said that I couldn't audition, and I said, mm, "So why?" And so she said, "Well, you know, Eileen, um, Snow White should be of a certain." elk and I thought okay. okay but if I'm the best person for the role maybe you know why wouldn't you consider that so she let me audition and I got the role mm. and that's been kind of when I was in my earlier years and really even in my career as a woman as a black woman doing the art and making art happen that's been the journey kind of that I've had to um, push through yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so give me a little background of <clears throat> how you came to be at the uh, Ensemble Theater, like in your genesis moment before the artistic director. Oh, wow. Well, um, I went to school at Northern Illinois University, so my degree is in theater arts. And um, we, we used to do a lot of plays, even though it was not a uh, HBCU or anything like that. We had a black theater company that did a lot of plays. So we did all the classics. So that's how I was introduced to black theater. So fast forward 
when I knew that I was going to be moving to Houston, which is a second home for me because my mother and father were from Houston. So even though we lived in Illinois, we would always come to Houston to come visit our grandparents and family and all of that. And one of those times when I was visiting my sister, in a more, uh, my sister Nia Becknell, who at the time was a uh, architect professor at University of Houston Central Campus, she said, hey, there's this guy that's out there on on this street right across from where I go all the time. And he's out there building and, and making things. And I asked him who he was. His name is George Hawkins. And she said, and he's a theater person. And I think you should come meet him next time you're here. And that's how I started. I actually went to George, saw him. It was at 1010 2M, which is six blocks from this space. And I asked him about, uh, you know, volunteering, because I knew that Volunteerism is my uh, is a passion of my family's because we were always we were ingrained with volunteering, being a part of the community, m you know, making sure that we were being of service. And so I said, well, let me volunteer at the ensemble theater, and he, of course, you know, needed the needed somebody to do that. And I always say that mm, that George saw things in my in me that I didn't see in myself. And and so he um, let me come and volunteer. So I volunteered as an as a you know catch all person to do anything at the theater, right? You know, just to be around. And then I started auditioning. And then he wrote a grant and got a grant for a managing director. And I became his managing director after that. So I was really the managing director before I was, you know, moved into the position I am now. So so to fast forward through that, like. What does that full circle moment feel like? Like, I mean, to to even know that you're sitting here in in this year, you know, from where you started at the ensemble, and now you are as accomplished as you are, you know, like, what does that full circle moment feel like? Take your time if you need to. All no, the time. I mean, you know, <laughs> it it just feels like. I, I, I want to say, uh, you know, I know it's cliche, but I just feel so blessed and I feel I feel it feels like heaven yeah. because I get to do and get to be a part of and get to experience and embrace and engage myself every day in yeah. something that I absolutely live and breathe. Amen. Amen. So I'm not just, like, you know, saying that to be, oh, you know, I'm saying that because it really is yeah. up in me. Yeah to create and to be a part of, a, of something greater than I could ever imagine. And so because of George giving me an opportunity to volunteer and be a part of it, I'm thankful every day. So it feels great. I mean, it feels like baby. <laughs> Look, I, I, I could totally agree with you, you know, Ali. I, I have definitely um, had some time wa walking around these hallways yeah, myself, you know, yes. like like just just to know that, that there is a place for for an a, 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 a actor of color, yeah. like and 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 specifically yeah. black, yes. you know, yeah. that there is always a place that that is that is open with open arms to walk through to produce art or just to just to have the community of being there. You know, it it has always been a wonderful feeling. You know how I am about the ensemble. You know, yeah. I'm I'm pulling up regardless. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, <laughs> you will. Yeah, I surely will. I surely will. Because you know, it's 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 almost irreplaceable, and it's nothing like the energy of of being here uh, with what you created and uh, the people who work here. You can't find that really anywhere else in the city. If if theater is involved you know so it's just a it's just a wonderful place to be and I, I appreciate what you have done you know for the city and for this place specifically and I'm, I'm just very looking forward to what is to come yeah. what is to come right. and, and that's my next question so like as far as aspirations go for uh, yourself in the theater in the next steps like what what are what are those ideals or what are those those things that you look forward to accomplish, you know, in, in time. You know, I, I, I have to go back a little bit for something that you said, and that was about having a place to be able to, um, you know, drop by or feel like your uh, your voice is being heard. And I think that's the most one of the most important things because what George did when he founded the institution, uh, the Ensemble Theater, was to give a give us a platform and a place for our voices to be heard. And when you think about that, that's huge, right? Because he saw the void in this city and he felt, okay, let me try to make sure that 
that people of color, that culturally specific institution, that a brown and that brown and black people had a place where their voices could be heard. And for me, so it's not just about what George did and then Eileen did and all of that. It's what we build as an ensemble, the name that we are, you know, as a community of people that help to engage and make that continue to happen. And, and for that, I'm grateful as well. So I think what's next going forward, first of all, we are, um, we have now a managing a new managing director, so I'm very excited about having that partner to work with at, from an executive leadership level that will be reporting to the board and working with the team here at the theater and working with our community. That's exciting, uh, but but most importantly, it's about continuing to make art and finding the uh, kind of nuclear and nuances that it takes to make that art happen. We know that the ensemble theater is here in this community, and we do main stage plays, so that. You know, there's no doubt about that. But I think what a lot of our community doesn't realize is all of the other things that we do. And that's where we're uh, kind of elevating the platform and the recognition and the understanding and of what it is that we do from Turing in education because we started out as a Turing in education program. That's where I with started Mr. out. That's right. We, I mean, we <laughs> all started. I was uh, brother, yeah. brother raccoon. I was rabbit and, and all kinds of uh, animals. Right. So you know, you you're making it happen, but yeah. you but you're learning to work as a team. You're learning to work as an ensemble. You're creating art and you're infecting affecting lives. And uh, when I look at that, I think, wow, that's that's exactly the dream and kind of stick to itiveness that George wanted us to. to to take place. So our Turing Education program, we're lifting that. Uh, we've been performing at the Hobby Center for the last month, and we're excited about that collaboration and what, hey, what that means. What is the name of that show? The name of that play is Pick Me Last, okay. and it's written by Adris Goodwin. Uh, he's out of Seattle uh, right now. I think he's the artistic director of the Children's Theater in Seattle. And uh, so that production and and uh you know our team stephen scott and the two education team have really been doing a great job of going out and creating these partnerships and relationships because we believe in partnerships and collaboration it's hugely important which is why you know we're even here today and then our young performance program which continues to be i mean that program was started in the 80s with myself and mrs lawson because we wanted to be able to have young people involved in practicing and perfecting their craft and then having them a platform I I mean, there's a young person that has been in the last two shows yeah. on the main yeah. stage. Yes. That's exciting that as That is heck. great. That's great. You know, to be able to do that. And then we do films and um, we have staged readings. We do playwright workshops. So I think it's helping our community to understand that we do more than just put on main stage plays, even though that's the core and, and the essence of what we do. Understood. Understood. Mm -hmm. So I'd be remiss if I would not uh, mention that you are one of the only women to have uh, fully directed and produced about nine of the August Wilson 10 cycle plays. So how, wh wh where do you stand with that? I, I know, I personally know how you uh, feel about August Wilson, but, but you, you can uh, graciously explain to anyone who may not understand what the relationship with, with the man and the words are like and what that means to, to even have achieved half of that, yeah. you know? Yeah. I absolutely love August. Yeah. I just love the work the, the the dynamic of what he's given to us as artists, uh, what he gives to us as audience members, how that those stories speak to what I'm feeling inside. You can see your uncle, your sister, your mama, your daddy, your cousin, <laughs> your somebody you don't yeah. like up there on that stage. You know, uh, you can see a lot of people that you know because of how he has related and you know crafted this language, this kind of rhythmic. Uh, journey dance that he takes us through and I, I had the wonderful pleasure of knowing August and having worked with him on a couple of occasions and um, he is a, a modest man but he's a very intelligent man a humble man and one that just let his work speak to who he what he believed in and so for me to be able to to produce and direct and delve into this art this 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 um, poetry, yeah, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. I, I'm honored. I'm just honored to be able to do that. Uh, you know, 
now I realize, wow, I'm, I'm not, I've directed nine shows. I, I'm the only woman that's done that. Yeah. I've got to direct all 10, so i got to do, do that last you one so that I can, you know, so that we, the world, can yeah. celebrate yeah. because he would want that. I think August would want that. You know, I, I, since I knew him, I think he would say, okay, Eileen, you better go ahead on, girl. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, but I think it's most importantly that he is, he, uh, I was thinking about this last night because there are several people in uh, the play that we're currently doing, and I know we'll talk about that, that have done the role of Boy Willie mm -hmm. at a certain age. Yeah. You know, I look at uh, uh, Lakeisha Randall on stage now, and, and she's playing Bernice, and I played Bernice. Yeah. So, and yet I can play older roles. So it's funny how he has, he has uh, sh uh, crafted his um, and positioned his plays so that you could start out at a young age, yeah. like the little girl that's playing mm -hmm. Maritha, and she'll be able to play Bernice, and then she'll be able to play Aunt Esther because of the journey that he's allowed these actors to take with these characters. I've never really looked at it yeah, like that. that I, I, have, I have transitioned in, in different roles of uh, August Wilson, right. but I never really thought about it like that. And you can. You can go from a child to an adult to, to an, an adult. older lady. Like, <laughs> All through ten plays, like yes. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that truly is amazing. But yes, as you said, let's let's uh, dive into your current uh, project or show that you are directing right now. What what show is that happening? Well, we're sitting on the stage yes, of are. the piano uh, lesson. Ooh, the, the best surprise winning yep. play by Mr. August Wilson. Yes, yes, yes. And. Um, he has, uh, this play is deals with legacy, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to do it this year, because our season theme at the ensemble is Legacy Alive. And what does that mean for you in your family or in your world? Uh, and this play deals all with legacy. Uh, this brother and sister are trying to figure out what they're going to do about this family heirloom and what's going to happen. But more importantly, it deals with realness, human dynamic, with um, the rawness of how when we when we allow ourselves to be exposed and vulnerable and then now what are you going to do but you depending on someone else so piano lesson is um one of the plays you know that that i needed to do and it's the ninth and uh and i'm just you know glad that we're here and able to produce this play here at the theater yeah I'm I'm grateful to see. I, I can say I have seen it. Probably gonna see it again one more time. So you know, get out here. When do y'all close? We close at the end of February. The end of February. Right. All right. So you got a couple more weeks to catch it. So catch it soon. Catch it soon. So moving on, I would like to uh, touch on the ensemble's involvement. As you said, like you know, you're working on community and bringing the community together. So. In that aspect, how has the ensemble uh, been involved with uh, the uh, fade to black era of life? I, I know that there are a lot of correlations between what fade to black is and what the ensemble is and how those two things intersect is seamlessly, you know, being it's uh, all African-American centric mostly, right. you know. So I would like you to, you know, just touch on touch on that and what is to come in right. the in the future with a partnership of the ensemble and fade to black but we're grateful for that i mean when um when the founder denise o'neill you know first was going to be starting fade to black we had many many conversations about just the business and how to do it and what was you know what it took to take that journey and i i was blessed that we were able to, to have those conversations because each one teach one each one learns from each other right and so we we you know we got a chance to really share about things her dreams and thing and the dreams that I knew from the ensemble theater and how you make all of that work so the ensemble theater has been uh, you know over the years um, a part of Fade to Black through sharing artists, actually having conversations, you know, about uh, the business, the uh, of various things. We've been, you know, blessed to share some things in that way. But I think most importantly, it's about being able to just create yes. and be be of support and be of um, of um, 
you know, partners in the fact that we're all doing this black theater. It's that's what's important to me is that it, there's enough for everybody mm -hmm. to do. And there's enough for us all to find different ways to be able to indulge in that. Uh, you know, most of the things that are being done from Fade to Black are more shorter pieces of work, whereas we're doing the, you know, we're doing classics and contemporaries and all that on a more, uh, you know, two hour show kind of thing or, you know, whatever is produced in that way. But in the future, what we're doing for the, the upcoming festival that's taking place, first of all, we're excited about. Yes. 2025. So excited oh, about man. 2025 and I'm what that's going to be for I'm this lit. city and for <laughs> it's gonna artists. Be, it's going to be like a theater Super Bowl. Yeah, that's it. It's a that's theater it. Super that's Bowl. That's a great way to put I it, I know, because I'm, I'm ready, y'all, and I love football, so, you know, <laughs> might as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm a ready. theater Super Bowl for, for artists. And the ensemble is going to be working uh, hand in hand. Uh, with Chewbacca Enterprises and Fade to Black in, in uh, the actual playwriting aspect of it where the playwrights will be sending in their scripts and those are going to be and so submissions and then we'll be you know winding you know kind of filtering those down so that we can uh, select out of the ones that are left and then we'll actually be producing uh, one or two over here in some way either through stage readings or we still working all of those logistics out but the the idea that we are here to be a part of it and uh, we're collaborating on this partnership is hugely important and viable and in, and in, and needed yes. for the city I, I agree I agree I'm I'm super excited for this uh, idea and and thing to come to pass like I I wish I could fast track through one year but you know you gotta gotta take your steps on, along the way you know you, gotta, gotta you, know, you can't be upsetting the universe the and trying to just <laughs> you're fast forward you just want to go right to the end I mean the journey you love you love rehearsal don't you okay so the process of rehearsal is important you know you you can't skip it even if you wanted to you know it's, it's almost inevitable like, i'm not gonna be able to wake up and it's gonna be 2025 tomorrow so i i just gotta walk through it anyway that's right so yeah uh thing we like to do here on the podcast is uh what we call faded forward right so it's just an idea or or nugget of advice or a piece of golden nugget of advice that you can uh, impart to anyone or a generalized people or a specific yeah. idea, uh, just anything. I mean, it could be constructive. Mm -hmm. It can be just a mm -hmm. uh, thought or an idea, but whatever that is, you know, just the idea of just fading that information forward to someone else, right. you know. So with, whatever you have, you can just give it to that camera right sure. there and give it to the people and give them your little nuggets. I'm sure it's going to be good. I might listen myself. Okay. <laughs> I, well, I'm glad that you're going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting I, better. I, I don't know. I think, for me, I think about um, how I just don't take no for an answer. Just, you know, the stick to that one needs to live, not just be an artist, but just to live is hugely important. And I'm gonna share a little story. So I wanted to have Intezaki Shange to direct for Colored Girls here at the Ensemble Theater. And everybody was like, oh, you're not gonna get Intezaki Shange? She's Intezaki Shange. How are you gonna get Intezaki Shange? And I thought, she is Intezaki Shange, but I'm gonna just ask her. All she can do is say no. So I asked Zaki, I said, Zaki, I really would love, and at the time she was here doing, she was a playwright in residence here at the, at the ensemble, and she was teaching at University of Houston Central Campus. And so I said, I'm going to ask her. And so I said, Zaki, I would love for you to direct Colored Girls. Oh, I mean, I've done Colored Girls. I don't want, she said, but I'll do it. I'll do it if you let me direct another show that's not mine. And so I was like, why would Zaki want to direct another show that's not hers? Well, she was a new director. So she wanted to, you know, like use, embrace her skills and, you know, figure out what was going on. And so because of that, she said yes to what I needed her to do because there was something else that she wanted to be able to consider and, 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 and kind of build upon. So I always say, don't take no for an answer. Know that you gotta have a lot of stick to -iveness and make your one-year, three-year, five-year plan, baby. 
You know, I leave. I appreciate that because I, I need to go and sit down right out my little four-year plan or something. <laughs> that, that what it, I still uh, do plans. Yeah, I journal all the I time. I need to go right by it you out. You got to figure that out. Well, thank you. This, this has thank been you. just absolutely wonderful, as you know. Oh, you know, I appreciate I, I, it. I'm just, I'm just so fulfilled right I now. You know, too. anytime thank I get you. to sit down and talk to you or mess with you, you know, I'm, I'm going to be good today at oh, this moment. okay. Thank but, you. But for for now. <laughs> I will be good for now, but I, I I can honestly say that I cherish you and I love you so much and what you have personally done for me in my career or have helped me with, whether whether things have, have progressed or not, I'm just thankful that you are just a willing participant in the in the 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 travels of Brandon, you know, and I, I'm... Because <laughs> travels of Brandon is great, baby. Man, I'm, I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. <laughs> Look, just, just tell everybody, hey, y'all keep hiring me. I am still working. Everybody, tell, every, tell everybody you know, wherever they are, I want to work. Thank you. You do. You're a working <laughs> yeah, artist. You I, enjoy the work. I do. And that's the I, beauty of I it. I do. I do. I do. And, that, do. and that shows. And I think that that kind of, that stick to ofness that's not taking no, that's moving yourself in the vein that you need to move in. I mean, people, you could go somewhere else and work, but why, why wouldn't you want to work in a city that you love and that's home and still be able to work? Whatever that whatever that journey is for you, it's it's invaluable. I, I, I try I try to make sure that like I, I'm like if I'm gonna be here right. in this place right. and I know I want to work, I I know that I need to be working as much as possible. Like even if I was somewhere else, but of course I'm from Houston. You know I I love this city to death. Yes, and I, you do. I do see like an an increase of the city coming like with, as far as the arts and film also like there there's something great coming and I I'm glad that I'm going to be here and be in the mix of it so and, you can and be at a the part forefront of it, of it. yeah That's yeah right. I'm going to be at the forefront That's of right. it. But, yes, thank you, Ali. Oh, thank you thank so you, much. Brandon. So much. You know, so I love much, you, so Sonny. Much. I appreciate, yes, I yes, appreciate thank you, thank everything. You. I, I can't say thank you enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, once again, this is Brandon Morgan in The Fade. I'm sitting here with the wonderful Miss Eileen J. Morris, and we thank y'all for tuning in, and we will catch you next time. Corey, I'm done. Shut it down. Thank you.